They don't want to focus on this. And in addition to being exposed as total frauds and political hacks over the government shutdown, well, Democrats are also massive hypocrites, and we have the evidence. Here's what they said back in 2013 when they were trying to blame Republicans for a government shutdown. You might remember this. I call them legislative ar ar uh, arsonist. They're there to burn down what we should be building up in terms of investments in education and, and uh, scientific research and all that it is that make our country great and competitive. It's sort of like this. Uh, someone goes into your house, takes your wife and children hostage, and then says, let's negotiate over the price of your house. You know, we could do the same thing on immigration. We, could, we believe strongly in immigration reform. We could say we're shutting down the government. We're not going to raise the debt ceiling until you pass immigration but reform. It would be governmental chaos. I joined the American people and they're disgusted at what happened uh, in terms of the shutdown of government. It's an unthinkable tactic to use uh, as a, a, in, in the political debate. The hypocrisy is stunning. That's what they are doing. These people have no shame and apparently they haven't actually figured out that most of what they say just five years ago is actually on videotape and just like the media, Democrats have zero credibility on the issue. Now for them, this is all about scare tactics and trying to convince you, the American people, that a shutdown will lead to mass suffering and apocalyptic-like circumstances. Those are all lies they've been telling all week. Now, the OMB director, Mick Mulvaney, explained earlier today that in 2013, and this did happen, the Obama administration, they made the shutdown as bad as possible to score cheap political points. They did hold everything hostage. And Mulvaney, he also laid out how most of the government is going to stay open if this, quote, shutdown happens in less than, what, three hours. Watch this. The Obama administration weaponized the shutdown in 2013. Um, what they didn't tell you was that they did not encourage agencies to use carry forward funds, carry uh, forward funds, funds that they were sitting on, nor did they encourage uh, agencies to use transfer authority. Uh, they could have made the shutdown in 2013 um, much less impactful. The military will still go to work. They will not get paid. Okay? The border will still be patrolled. They will not get paid. Uh, fire uh, fire uh, folks will still be fighting the fires out west. They will not get paid. Um, the parks will be open. People won't get paid. Fannie and Freddie will be open. The post office will be open. The TSA will be open. But again, all of these people will be working for nothing, which is simply not fair. We are going to manage the shutdown differently. We are not going to weaponize it. We're not going to try and hurt people, especially people having to work for this federal government. We're not going to hurt people. Now, that's the truth. The government doesn't really shut down. I hope the Democrats won't inconvenience all these brave people that work on the border, the firemen, just don't believe the media and the Democrats, their typical scare tactics, because they're not true. And this is a Fox News Alert. Welcome to Hannity this busy Friday night. Breaking right now, the clock is ticking to avoid a government shutdown. Congress has a procedural scheduled vote. That is within the hour, but the outcome is uncertain as of now. Also tonight, we will debunk all the lies, the hysteria in the media over the potential shutdown and expose the Democrats for their blatant hypocrisy on this issue. And also tonight, major developments in the biggest abuse of power in our generation. It is a scandal so big it is making Watergate look small and insignificant. Sarah Carter is reporting that congressional Republicans, they are lining up to see the classified memo that shows systemic FISA abuses that were committed by the Obama administration against the Trump campaign and the incoming president. This is only about a tenth of what we know is coming. Stay tuned. Tonight, we are issuing you a call to action. The American people, how do we get this explosive information released? Release the memo. We'll cover all of it in tonight's breaking news, Friday night, opening monologue. All right, so the Democrats, the media, they're desperately trying to whip you into a frenzy about a government shutdown. Now, they want to create a climate of fear and panic that is all based on lies. Now, let not your heart be troubled. The left, they're not telling you the truth about what is actually going to happen if at midnight tonight the government, quote, shuts down. It never really shuts down. It's all an attempt to try and use the su shutdown to bludgeon once again President Trump and the Republicans politically. Even though when you look at the facts and the truth, they have nothing to do with this. Now, Senate, Senate Democrats led by Chuck Schumer, they're the ones to blame tonight. They're the ones 
who really, in reality, are putting illegal immigrants before you, the American people. DACA is in place until March. It is not that urgent. It is why it is now being called tonight the Schumer shutdown. Now, he and liberals, they own this tonight. And, of course, fake news, CNN, the whole network, well, they're taking the lead in launching a false shutdown narrative to try and smear the president and Republicans. Now, take a look. This is classic. How the OMB director, Mick Mulvaney, completely shuts down and owns Jim Acosta of the fake news network. Watch this. How can it be the Schumer shutdown when Republicans control the White House, uh, the House, and the Senate? Come on, you know the answer to that as well as anybody. I mean, I, I, I have to laugh when people say that, oh, we control the House, and the Senate, and the White House, why can't you, you get do. this done? You, do. you, you know as well as anybody that it takes 60 votes in the Senate to pass an appropriations bill, right? You know that. I know that. Okay, so, so, it, so when you not? only have 51 right. votes in the Senate, then you have to have Democrat support in order to keep the government to fund the government. So that's the answer to your question. It seems that the whole process was blown up by the president's comments. When Republicans tried to add a discussion about Obamacare to the funding process in 2013, we are cre accused by Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer of inserting a non-fiscal, a non-financial issue into the spending process in order to shut the government down. How is that not exactly what is happening today? There is no reason that you have to deal with DACA this week. There's no reason you have to deal with DACA before the end of February, excuse me, the middle of February. DACA doesn't expire till March 5th. Fifth. This is purely an attempt by the Senate Democrats, led by Mr. Schumer, that's why we call it the Schumer shutdown, in order to try and get a shutdown that they think this president gets blamed for. Now, fake news is CNN's Jim Acosta. He's either lying to you or he doesn't understand that if you're in the Senate, you actually need 60 votes to break a filibuster. Are you paying attention, Jim? That's why it's being called the Schumer shutdown, because the Democrats, they are refusing to vote on a clean continuing resolution, which they say they always liked. And that includes funding for the CHIP program, the Children's Health Insurance Program that they say they wanted and wanted badly. Now, don't believe any of this for a second. In this particular case, the Democrats actually care about DACA and the Dreamers, that this is what it's about. They don't even want a DACA solution. They want to run on this in 2018. They want to use it as a political weapon for these midterm elections. Now, Democrats and the media, they're also praying that this shutdown drags on for as long as possible because they want to stop, what, the Trump economy dead in its tracks, which is not going to happen. Now, President Trump, he has thankfully reversed the economic decline that we saw all eight years under Barack Obama and the left. They can't stand watching this. Look at this. Good news for you is bad news for them. The stock market is at an all time high under President Trump. The Dow Jones is having its best year since FDR was president. 2.2 million jobs now have been created. Unemployment in America, a 17 year low. Americans filing for unemployment. Get this is at a 45 year low. Good news. Americans and African Americans and Hispanic unemployment, get this, it's at an all time low under the president's policies and consumer confidence is near an all time high. Also, two million fewer people are on food stamps today. The forgotten men and women are being remembered, finally. In other words, it is a complete in one year turnaround and the exact opposite of what we saw during the last eight years of Obama's failed economy. They don't want to focus on this. And in addition to being exposed as total frauds and political hacks over the government shutdown, well, Democrats are also massive hypocrites, and we have the evidence. Here's what they said back in 2013 when they were trying to blame Republicans for a government shutdown. You might remember this. I call them legislative ar ar uh, arsonist. They're there to burn down what we should be building up in terms of investments in education and, and uh, scientific research and all that it is that make our country great and competitive. It's sort of like this. Uh, someone goes into your house, takes your wife and children hostage, and then says, let's negotiate over the price of your house. You know, we could do the same thing on immigration. We, could, we believe strongly in immigration reform. We could say we're shutting down the government. We're not going to raise the debt ceiling until you pass immigration but reform. It would be governmental chaos. I joined the American people in their disgust at what happened uh, in terms of the shutdown of government. It's an unthinkable tactic to use uh, as a, a, in, in the political debate. 
The hypocrisy is stunning. That's what they are doing. These people have no shame. And apparently they haven't actually figured out that most of what they say just five years ago is actually on videotape. And just like the media, Democrats have zero credibility on the issue. Now, for them, this is all about scare tactics and trying to convince you, the American people, that a shutdown will lead to mass suffering and apocalyptic like circumstances. Those are all lies they've been telling all week. Now, the OMB director, Mick Mulvaney, explained earlier today that in 2013, and this did happen, the Obama administration, they made the shutdown as bad as possible to score cheap political points. They did hold everything hostage. And Mulvaney, he also laid out how most of the government is going to stay open if this, quote, shutdown happens in less than, what, three hours. Watch this. The Obama administration weaponized the shutdown in 2013. Um, what they didn't tell you was that they did not encourage agencies to use carry forward funds, carry uh, forward funds, funds that they were sitting on, nor did they encourage uh, agencies to use transfer authority. Uh, they could have made the shutdown in 2013 um, much less impactful. The military will still go to work. They will not get paid. Okay? The border will still be patrolled. They will not get paid. Uh, fire uh, fire uh, folks will still be fighting the fires out west. They will not get paid. Um, the parks will be open. People won't get paid. Fannie and Freddie will be open. The post office will be open. The TSA will be open. But again, all of these people will be working for nothing, which is simply not fair. We are going to manage the shutdown differently. We are not going to weaponize it. We're not going to try and hurt people, especially people who happen to work for this federal government. We're not going to hurt people. Now, that's the truth. The government doesn't really shut down. I hope the Democrats won't inconvenience all these brave people that work on the border, the firemen, just don't believe the media and the Democrats, their typical scare tactics, because they're not true. And very few people will tell you that. All right, on to our big top story tonight. Alarming, shocking. People will go to jail. Comparisons to KGB tactics. Well, that is how lawmakers tonight are describing the biggest scandal in American history that the media is trying to ignore. They will not be able to. Now, Sarah Carter is reporting tonight that more than 130 members have actually gone to see the explosive classified memo that shows systematic FISA abuses against the Trump campaign and an incoming president. And according to Sarah Carter, the vast majority of those members of Congress, they happen to be Republicans. In fact, only Democrats, the only ones to look at the four page memo are the ones who are on the House Intelligence Committee. And only one other Democrat we know of actually took the time and went over to look at it today. And Democrats on that House committee, by the way, who are the ones that voted to keep it secret from Congress, they don't want you to see it. So what are the Democrats trying to cover up in this particular case? What are they hiding here? Who are they protecting here? And why do they want to keep it a secret? Now, tonight, we are demanding that this information be released to you, the public, because the American people, you need to know about this huge and massive abuse of power and how the Obama administration has weaponized the powerful tools of intelligence and how the Clinton bought and paid for phony Russian dossier was actually used to not only spy on the Trump campaign, but also to get a FISA warrant based on lies. So. We're asking tonight that you call your members of Congress. There's the number. It's on your screen. 202-224-3121. Tell your members of Congress. Release the memo. That's it. If you're on Twitter, hashtag release the memo. We're going to put the number up throughout the show tonight. Now, I know a lot of you have been writing and asking, well, why is it taking so long? We have been since March, we reported first then about this abuse, that the Trump campaign had a FISA warrant that was issued against them. That was back in March. We have been unpeeling the layers of this onion, this massive scandal, and it is so imperative. We've now gotten to this point that you need to see this information for yourself. We hope you'll call the number on your screen. Demand, just release the memo. Tell the truth to the American people, because we have a few powerful people in the intelligence community. Well, they thought they knew better than we did, than you did, about who should be the president. They abused their position. They tried to influence, steal, rig an election. Now, all that needs to happen is this. The House Intelligence Committee, they need to vote to release this information to the public. They will then send it to the White House, so I would assume would sign off on it. So in reality, with enough pressure, this can be done in a matter of days. And sources familiar with this memo, they are telling us that the contents of this memo are so severe and so shocking 
that it will lead to the firing of people at the highest levels of the FBI and the DOJ. Now, please keep this in mind, as we said earlier, everything that we are telling you tonight, it's only a small portion of what will be coming out throughout this year. It's going to take time. We're going to need your patience. But the first explosive evidence is now available. Think back to Watergate. Watergate was a, what, a third rate break in a group of people trying to cover up, you know, a break in at the Watergate Hotel to get information on an opposition candidate. This scandal is about the systemic abuse of power, the weaponizing of the powerful tools of intelligence against an opposition party during an election year and in the process shredding our Constitution, our Fourth Amendment constitutional protections against unreasonable search and seizure, all in a plot to impact and rig and steal an election. That's how important this is. And I don't care if you're a liberal, a conservative, a Republican and Democrat, you need to care about this because we will lose our constitutional republic if we don't get to the bottom of this. And when all this information finally sees the light of day, it will remove any doubt that the special counsel, Robert Mueller, his team of partisan Democratic donors need to be disbanded and their witch hunt needs to be shut down immediately. And as we showed you last night, these are the key players in all of this. They are high ranking Obama, FBI and DOJ officials and a lot more information about them will be coming out in just the next couple of weeks. I think the latest we will get this is around January 30th, but we need to see it sooner. We also know that the Trump hating FBI agent Peter Strzok and his FBI lawyer mistress, Lisa Page, they're at the center of everything here. And we know from the released text messages that they called then candidate Trump an idiot, lonesome, a lonesome human being, F Trump. And there are still 9,600 text messages that we have not seen yet. And one particular message really gets to the heart of what we've been trying to find out. And this is between Peter Strzok and Page. And now it makes a lot more sense knowing what we know. Now, back in August, Strzok wrote to Lisa Page, well, I want to believe the path that you threw out for consideration in Andy's office, that there's no way he gets elected, but I'm afraid we can't take that risk. It's like an insurance policy in the unlikely event that you die before you're 40. Now, we, of course, believe that was Andy, Andy McCabe, the FBI director, of course, Andrew McCabe. And we also are believing tonight, and we have very strong evidence to corroborate this, that Lisa Page was the key counsel for McCabe. You see the nexus here? You got Lisa Page, you got Peter Strzok, you got Andrew McCabe. What's the insurance policy? Talking about an insurance policy in case Donald Trump wins the election and Hillary loses. And at the same time, then you have the Obama administration. They're trying to obtain a FISA warrant to spy on the Trump campaign. And they say, allegedly, it's about Carter Page, but we know it's a pretext. And sources are telling us that the first request for the warrant was rejected. They said no, which rarely happens. And that's when the Clinton bought and paid for phony Russian propaganda dossier was then used. Now that dossier put the request over the top. Then they were granted the FISA warrant and that allowed the Obama administration to begin the systemic abuse of FISA spying powers to target a candidate, an opposing candidate, an opposition party in an election. And this is part of the important Fusion GPS. Now, co-founder Glenn Simpson, now he testified, this was released yesterday. He didn't even bother to verify what was in the dossier. He just trusted the person he's paying, British spy Christopher Steele, even though Steele is known to have paid Russians for information. And by the way, his very skilled nature is what? His skill is deception. And we're learning from the Simpson testimony that the Clinton campaign and the DNC knew he was reacting, in other words, and reaching out to the media outlets to try and get them to write stories about the fa fabricated Russian dossier. So just like we've been telling you, Clinton bought and paid for a dossier, $12 million. It was going right through one lawyer, through her campaign, right through another lawyer, through the DNC, which she was controlling. In it, what do we have? Russian lies, salacious lies, all in an attempt. She rigged the election against Bernie. Now she's trying to rig the election against Trump. Comey and Strzok, well, they exonerate her before an investigation. You get it? There's a lot of rigging here. I know this is a lot to absorb, but there are so many questions. We need to know who knew what, when, and where. And let me tell you this tonight. 
Andrew McCabe, if you're watching, you need to be fired and you need to be investigated. And by the way, so does the Trump-hating FBI agent, Peter Strzok fired and investigated his FBI lawyer mistress fired and investigated Lisa Page gone demoted DOJ official Bruce Orr who met with Fusion GPS before and after removed fired and investigated James Comey who we know rigged in other words gave an exoneration before investigation we learned today is reportedly going to teach an ethical leadership class at William and Mary You've got to be kidding. Anyway, he needs to be investigated, and he may want to hire a lawyer instead, maybe an ethical one at that. Rod Rosenstein, you need to explain your role in all of this, and specifically, if you were involved in extending this FISA warrant. And frankly, Rod Rosenstein needs to be fired. And finally tonight, special counsel Robert Mueller, his corrupt and biased investigation needs to be shut down once and for all. It was predicated on lies from the beginning. The country has suffered enough, and it has been unfair, inaccurate, untrue, and extremely and extraordinarily and abusively biased in their tactics and their hiring of people with questionable ethics who in the past have withheld exculpatory evidence, were overturned, 9-0 in the Supreme Court. People went to jail, and that was overturned in the Fifth Circuit. The Court of Appeal, and you only hired people that donated to Barack Obama, Hillary, and of course the DNC. What we are in covering, uncovering here is far worse than Watergate. People need to be held accountable, especially when you have congressmen that saw the memo that say the memo is likely to send people to jail. This is a massive abuse of power, a major violation, and a shredding of America's constitutional principles. The powerful tools of intelligence were abused by the people at the top, not the rank and file, not the FBI you know, agents out there working hard to protect us every day, not the people in the intelligence community that protect us every day. These were people at the top. Instead, they weaponized those tools of intelligence to spy on an opposition party, and it is why tonight we are asking you to help us and demand that this memo be released to the American people that will begin the process, only begin it, to show the abuse that has taken place for the American people. Call the number at the bottom of your screen, and I hope you will demand to release the memo. Hashtag release the memo. Here with Reaction, Fox News, national security strategist and former deputy assistant to the president, Sebastian Gorka. Fox News contributor, investigative reporter, Sarah Carter. Fox News legal analyst, Greg Jarrett. Sarah, I want to go back to where we were last night. This was back in March of 26th of last year that you literally first said, wait a minute, we've discovered that a FISA warrant was obtained to spy on you know, then candidate Trump and maybe another warrant, you and John Solomon breaking the story. That's to right. Explain to my friends that are so impatient how, why it's taking so long, because it's been literally a layer of onion a day. Because we've had to have the evidence, and each piece of this puzzle is another piece of evidence that we could deliver to the American people and to Congress. And when Congress took over, and when the Department of Justice took over, they're unraveling, they're moving forward with, with the investigations that we weren't privy to because we couldn't access the classified information. It is so important to understand that had we not looked into this, had Hillary Clinton won, we would have never known that this was happening. And this is exactly what they expected to happen. This is why they got so lazy. This is why we see those text messages between Peter Strzok and Lisa Page. And now, Sean, I, this is really interesting. You know, before I got here, I was contacted by law enforcement officials, both former FBI and current, and they were saying to me, get the text messages from Andy McCabe. Get his text messages. Find out what was going on there because there's a lot more where Lisa struck, uh, where, where, where Peter struck and Lisa Page left off. There's a lot more to be seen there. And, you know, once again, this is one piece of the puzzle at a time. And this is what we've got to do to uncover the truth. And I, I think that the American people will be just as shocked as Congress. And I think they're going to get those answers very shortly. Greg Jarrett, let's go to the legal side of this. You have been examining every aspect of it. Tell us where we are, and do you agree with my calls for the firings? Anybody you disagree with? Oh, absolutely. Uh, 
Top officials should be impeached, which means they can't hold another government position. But I suspect this intel document is going to reveal multiple felonies by high-ranking officials at the FBI and the Department of Justice. There's a federal felony statute. It's called deprivation of rights under color of law. And it says that a government official cannot use their position of power to deprive somebody of their constitutional rights. Here, it's the constitutional right to privacy as upheld by the Supreme Court. So if the FBI and the DOJ goes into a federal judge using a fake false document to obtain a warrant to spy, that's a violation, it's a felony, it's 10 years behind bars. People ought to be prosecuted for that. Eddie, is there anyone you disagree with that should be fired? And do you agree that the special counsel, Robert Mueller, needs to be disbanded because it was all done on false pr pretenses and it seems it was all done illegally? Well, one of the uh, congressmen who saw this four-page intel document said yesterday, People ought to be fired, and he named names, and one of them, in addition to Bruce Orr, is Rod Rosenstein, who's the acting attorney general in the Mueller investigation. He's Mueller's boss. He's overseeing it. If he goes, Mueller should go, and so should his investigation. Dr. Gorker, you were in the White House for a big period of this time. Um, I've got to imagine this becomes very distracting and the fact that it's all predicated on something that is false, erroneous, and that we've had no evidence for in a year, probably frustrating to you. Well, it was, but the president told me one day in the Oval, just the two of us, that they will find nothing because there is no Russian collusion. So the president must be uh, uh, commended for being completely hands off with regards to all these absurd allegations and investigations. But I have to repeat and emphasize something you said in your monologue, Sean. Uh, just before I came to the studio, I spoke to my sources as well. The memo is the tip of the iceberg. That refers to DOJ and FBI malfeasance and felonious activity weaponizing intelligence against U.S. citizens. But it and goes Sarah, much do you higher. Agree with that too? It goes much higher. Agreed. Oh, absolutely. And I Sarah, agree. And remember, Sean, it was about the FISA. It was about FISA 702, abusing that system. And remember, they collect everything. This is not just about foreigners. There's a collection of all Americans. So every call that's made overseas, every email, everything. I want to know how many people within the Trump campaign and within the Trump administration, exactly. they were actually... How many people? How and many? surveilled and unmasked and leaked upon. It's we so much more to come. All, I want to say this. All of you have been amazing. Thank you for your hard work in the last year. We have another year of hard work ahead. Ed Henry next on the government shutdown. This is a Fox News alert. By the way, one quick correction. I met Watergate Complex, not hotel, and I apologize. Congress has a procedural vote scheduled this hour, within the hour, to potentially avoid a government shutdown. And joining us now live from the White House is Fox News Chief National Correspondent, our friend Ed Henry. Going to be a long night. Hope you have a lot of espresso there, Ed. <laughs> yeah, we're getting ready for that, Sean. Look, we actually have some breaking news this hour, which is that you're right. Uh, the storyline has been all night that at 10 p.m. Eastern, there's a Senate vote likely to fail because let's be clear, Senate Democrats are saying they're going to block this House GOP bill that passed last night to keep the government open. So what's the breaking news? We're now being told by Lindsey Graham, the Republican of South Carolina, he's been shuttling back and forth between the Democratic leader Chuck Schumer and the Republican leader Mitch McConnell's offices up on Capitol Hill. He says there's now the outlines, at least, of a framework, not a deal, but maybe a framework for a deal uh, that would keep the government open till February 8th not the 16th, uh, as laid out and, and approved by the House last night. Why would they move that up? Number one, he says uh, that both sides want to get this past the State of the Union, the president's first State of the Union, January 30th, that's coming up so that this mess is sort of cleared for a while. Uh, but then also, instead of waiting until the 16th, move it up to February 8th. So there's at least a week's more urgency to deal with four or five big issues. And I'll quickly rattle those off. Uh, Graham talking about DACA, of course, how are you going to deal with the children of illegal immigrants.
immigrants who are here, but at the same time promising that border security that this president has said over and over has to be dealt with will be in there. And then children's health insurance funding. We've talked about that. Finally, I think maybe the most important thing uh, is that Lindsey Graham is pointing out that today we heard from Defense Secretary James Mad Dog Mattis, who said that this mess in Washington right now is hurting military readiness. And so Lindsey Graham and others on the Hill are saying they want this spending bill eventually to deal with defense spending because at a time of great threat around the world, uh, this ping pong back and forth between the House and Senate and everything else uh, is not helping military readiness. So there's not a deal yet, but what's breaking this hour, Sean, is that for the first time we see the possibility of something to avoid a shutdown where they would keep this government open till February 8th. But again, they, they haven't, they don't have the votes yet. There's a framework here. They're trying to put it together. We'll see if they'll beat the clock at midnight, just two and a half hours away. All right, Ed Henry at the White House joining us now with reaction. She's the counselor to President uh, Trump. Kellyanne Conway is with us. Kellyanne, the one thing that really, well, two things struck me today um, as Mick Mulvaney was talking and speaking to the press. Number one, how ignorant Jim Acosta is that you need 60 votes. And number two, he said, you, we, this does not have to be painful. Obama and the Democrats made it more painful than it needed to be. That will not be the case this time. A look at the different approach of this president from the former president. He was entertaining negotiations, listening to people very patiently today. I witnessed some of it. And uh, this president has said from the beginning that he supports a longer term deal. You've got the Democrats now on the wrong side of history with the tax cuts, which already have yielded millions of Americans benefiting from pay raises and bonuses and capital investments and repatriation of wealth. If you voted against a tax cut last month, you voted against 20,000 jobs from Apple this month. And the same thing is happening now. The Democrats tonight are on the wrong side of history. They're against veterans and children. Our Border Patrol agents are firefighters. They're against the Pentagon when our Secretary of Defense says that military readiness is in peril. So you've got Donald Trump, our president, very cleverly having the Democrats be against CHIP, a children's health uh, plan, which will imperil many, many children who rely upon that. Um, all we're asking for is a longer term deal that funds our military that gets that wall, the border security. Uh, the president has said he'll talk about DACA. Sean, there's a, de there's a deadline approaching tonight, but the deadline's not DACA. Mm -hmm. That's in March. The deadline tonight is a spending bill to keep our government open. Yeah. And, and you're starting, by the way, you're starting to see, you're starting to see some Democrats peel off. They're not willing to go down with this sinking ship uh, that the, I think the more left wing folks who are auditioning for 2020 are trying to steer the Democratic Party into. You see some of those red state Democrats tonight peeling off from the leadership and saying they can support this bill. All right. You know, um, look, this is so important on so many different levels, um, not the least of which is we're going to have Border Patrol agents. They have to work, but they may not get paid. That's right. That's hurting, you know, the forgotten right. men and women, the people that do all these great jobs for us, firemen, etc. Um, if it's only till February 8th and Chuck Schumer, does he not know that they don't have control of this and that he is trying to weaponize and, and threaten the American people with a big shutdown? Because that's the language that he used and Pelosi used just five years ago. Well, the answer to your question was said by many Democrats publicly on TV and elsewhere today, Sean. Many Democratic uh, office holders and pundits and sympathizers took to the airwaves and said, oh, well, the Republicans will be blamed for this. They control the House, the Senate, the White House. First of all, you need 60 votes. Secondly, that's the wrong way of looking at this because there's only one major party and one major movement for the last year plus that has claimed the mantle of, quote, resistance. And America knows who that is. The Democrats pride themselves on obstruction, resistance, saying no, and holding up a stop sign. So people will know the same mm -hmm. folks who we resisted giving the forgotten men and forgotten women tax cut last month are getting in their way of those who live paycheck to paycheck of getting that paycheck. They know the pay this is the paycheck president, Donald Trump, versus folks who are be so petty about DACA before the deadline even is upon us that they would deny people their paychecks. And th that really is regrettable. I right. hope they we change their mind, and I hope they see toward, uh, toward the the, the, I think the value of keeping the government open. 
All right, Kelly, and we thank you. We'll be watching. By the way, the president just tweeted this out. He said, not looking good for our great military or safety and security on the very dangerous southern border. Dems want to shut down to help diminish the great success of tax cuts and what they are doing for a booming economy. That was just tweeted out. When we come back, Pam Bondi is with us. Also, Herman Cain will get their take on the biggest scandal in American history. Please stay with us on this busy, breaking Friday news night. All right, back to this controversial FISA memo that is circulating in Congress. It is revealing now disturbing surveillance abuses by the U.S. government against the Trump campaign and the Trump transition and a president-elect. Here with more reaction, we have the Florida Attorney General, Pam Bondi, Fox News contributor, our friend Herman Cain. Well, both are friends. Pam, legally, as we now have discovered all of this, it's so much bigger than Watergate. This is the powerful tools of intelligence, the top people that have access to those tools, and it's about using them and the FISA courts to prevent somebody from getting elected and then sabotage him after he was. Sean, it represents a profound corruption of the rule of law in our country. You know, we talk about the Constitution being a sacred document that includes the Fourth Amendment. And really tonight, um, I'm disgusted. I've, I've, it's horrible. People that you and I are friends with in Congress, who we know and trust, who have seen these documents, have said it's horrific, it's horrible, heads should roll. They, our, our justice system has completely been inverted by this process. And I agree with you now that this investigation needs to end. These people must be investigated, meaning top officials at justice and the FBI. And whether Jeff Sessions recused himself from the investigation, they all work for him now. He's seen the text, That's correct. he's seen the memos, and he is the man who is in charge of bringing these people in. And if, if it's found of wrongdoing, they need to be indicted, convicted, and incarcerated. Herman Cain, I know you went through a lot when you were a presidential candidate. We've been longtime friends. It was horrible. It was abusive. This is on a level that is way beyond anything I've ever seen and maybe hopefully beyond anything we will ever see again. And it's only the beginning. It is only the beginning, Sean, as you indicated. And as Pam said, people that we know and trust are horrified as to what's in that memo. But here's something that's even worse than what appears is going to come out as a result of this. Somebody should go to jail. I say should because due process takes a long time. Now, here's what's even more troubling. You have talked about the deep state, which is short for the deep bureaucratic federal government. Think about 2.1 million people and how much more corruption there might be embedded within the federal bureaucracy. That's even worse than what we're facing. But the good news is, it's now being revealed about the real corruption that took place. And the only reason we're finding out about it now is because Hillary didn't win. They were so sure she was gonna win the presidency. So she was gonna, we never she was gonna rake it under the rug. We now have found out about it. Mm -hmm. Pam Bondi, we first reported on the potential of a FISA warrant almost a year ago. It has taken a year to, you know, grind away and, and unpeel that layer of an onion. The people that I mentioned, Lisa, and Peter, Lisa Page, Peter Strzok, Andrew McCabe, Rod Rosenstein, James Comey, Bruce Orr, do you agree with me in what I'm saying that they all need to be in investigated, well, first fired, then investigated, and then prob and immediately, I believe, we should disband the special counsel based on the false pretense and circumstances under which it was put together. Yeah, and just to explain to, to, to all, all, all your viewers, if a FISA warrant as a prosecutor, career prosecutor, that's one of the most serious things you can get as a prosecutor. And you go in there and you swear to a judge that the evidence that you're showing them to obtain a warrant to spy on someone, to wiretap no, no, their a, a, phones. A warrant, but predicated on a phony, lying that, Russian dossier paid for by another candidate right. spying so, so on an opposition. These, 
So these agents are swearing to a judge that this is true. And we they have to, we know, it. we know for a fact which ones knew it was false. We have to, I can't believe the judge hasn't already held them in contempt of court, frankly. I really can't. They came in and swore and I want to, to know a judge. Rod Rosenstein, Are, if he, if he uh, extended it, we're running out of time. Herman, last word. Yes. Last word is this. This is worse than Watergate as we allow due process to unfold. Here's the other thing. All the Democrats, as some of your previous guests pointed out, voted against letting the public know. Once again, they don't want the public to know the truth. The Democrats don't. Look at the number. We keep putting it up throughout the show. Release the memo. Hashtag release the memo. Dan Bongino, Geraldo, they battle it out next. We expect in just minutes the Senate will hold a procedural vote to end the filibuster on the House interim spending bill. We do not expect it will pass. Joining us now with reaction, former Secret Service agent Dan Bongino, Fox News correspondent at large, Geraldo Rivera. Geraldo, I go back five years. I listen to the rhetoric of Chuck Schumer. He's doing the exact opposite and arguing the exact opposite thing he was arguing five years ago. Are you suggesting, Sean, down. that there's no hypocrisy in politics? <laughs> How shocking. <laughs> it, there, is, How shocking. there is no doubt but that the, the Democrats are, are doing to the Republicans what the Republicans did to the Democrats. The victims, in my view, are these poor dreamer kids. This is an issue that should have been resolved months ago. Now they put President Trump in a place where uh, he either has to... Uh, Capitulate to the Democrats Wait and make it look as if fair, he went that, kicking. The dreamers are still here I, until the end fair. of March. That's they and and Trump offered a deal. Chain migration ended, merit-based uh, uh, immigration in the wall, and you got a deal. And a lot of conservatives didn't like that deal. I'm, I'm with you. I absolutely believe that this is a deal that should have been made months ago. This is the deal that I believe was made when Senator Durbin decided rather than to help the undocumented immigrants and the dreamers in oh, Illinois, okay. he would rather snitch out the president and get him, uh, uh, you know, embarrass him and 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 paint him as a racist that he went for the short money Durbin did. He embarrassed the president. He cut up the president. He got uh, the, the whole uh, uh, shat hole thing uh, so notorious. This is the deal that should have been made. The victims, I think, are the dreamer kids. I believe Ed Henry's reporting. I think there will be a continuing resolution. I don't know if you can get it done unless this is the vote that gets it done. Uh, you know, unless they can muster this in the next two hours. I, I, I think it's a long shot, but say they get to of February 8th. For the next three weeks, you're going to have a bitter, ugly immigration debate that gets us back to the same position we are in right, right now. It just it'll be uh, Dan three Bongino. weeks from now. It, yeah, they're Sean, holding this hostage. I, I, yeah. Listen, this is a scam, okay? Uh, Geraldo, the real dreamers are the American citizens who finance this government right now, who are being screwed over by this clown show in Washington, D.C., and this utter lie being told by the lying charlatans in the Democrat Party telling the American people that there's a DACA deadline. There is no DACA deadline. Listen, guys, horse blinders. The DACA deadline is March 5th. This is a scam by the charlatans in the Democrat Party who couldn't give a hoot about immigration and care only about votes. They, have, they couldn't give a damn about the American citizens right now. They're embarrassing us again in front of the entire world, and it's all based on another lie that there's a DACA deadline now that doesn't exist. This is crap, and we're all being screwed because... You know, you know this whole thing about hypocrisy and crap and lies and all the rest of it, it really doesn't matter. Everyone once in a while, you have a, a time where the Senate needs 60 votes to get anything accomplished. And so now the Democrats who are out of power know that just for these 10 minutes, they can screw the president. They can embarrass the president. They have the choice, the Democrats. Do they really want to do something for the Dreamer kids or do they want to embarrass the president? So far, they've chosen to embarrass the president. What he does now, I, 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 it's a long shot. The only thing he can do is a short term continuing resolution. Use these three weeks to hammer out a deal that they should have hammered out. Shame on both these parties for no. eating up no, no. The, the whole future of these children. I think it's horrible. 
Now, you know, Geraldo, not shame on both of these parties. I am no big fan of the Republican Party. Believe me, they've sold this out, too, over the years. But this is that's just not true. The Republicans have capitulated on every single thing that had to be handled right now. Like on what? Chip, Come on, on Dan, increased like domestic what? spending. But no, this is true. This is a fact. They have capitulated to the Democrats on everything, which angers me. The Republicans gave the Democrats everything they wanted. And the Democrats said, no, no, we don't want that. We're going to close is, down the government anyway. I'm sorry. This it's not is the Schumer. This is the Schumer. This is the Schumer shutdown. The, I think the Democrats will bear the blame. Right. The Dreamer kids will be less popular even than they were. 2013 was the Republican Ted Cruz shutdown. This is dirty politics. Love, and we're yeah, uh, left holding on the bag. Uh, uh, it didn't hurt anybody. This government shutdown will hurt nobody. All right. Thank you both. When we come back, is liberal Joe colluding with Putin and the Russians? We'll play you the tape. All right. The Senate is only minutes away from holding a procedural vote. That's to end the filibuster on the House interim spending bill. And now, by the way, it's time for our video of the day. So liberal Joe, well, Dr. Liberal Joe and Dr. Mika, well, in this case, Joe's at it again. The biggest truth that Donald Trump doesn't want out. And it's the truth we've been asking about since January, or I'm sorry, make that December of 2015. And that is that Vladimir Putin has something on Donald Trump. Let me say it again, mm -hmm. because there's been a lot of noise from Donald Trump over the past year, as he, since he's been president. Vladimir Putin has something that he is holding over Donald Trump's head, and it is bad. By the way, how would liberal Joe know that? Joe, you're losing it. You need psychiatric help. Where are your sources? Could it be that you are colluding with the Russians? It's the only thing I can co conclude. All right, before we go, one more item of business. The Hannity Hotline. Oh, this has been a tough week. Listen to this. Boy, Hannity, when are they going to take you off the air? Because, I mean, if you told the truth once, I think my TV would blow up. Something's wrong tonight. The hair around your temple area, it looks all white. It's not even gray. And then the hair on the top of your head, you either have too much black gel on it or too much gel. It looks black. Um, maybe you were trying to match your temple area with your white shirt and the top with the jacket. But something's not working. You might want to try some hair color. All right, let me have it. It's fine. I can handle it. We want to hear from you. 877-225-8587. We'll always be fair and balanced. Let not your heart be troubled. Good evening.